Good evening. You are tuned to KGBM Bozeman. We are Gallatin Valley Community Radio. You can find us at 95.9 on your FM dial if your radio still has a dial. We're online at kgbm.org. It's time tonight for the local musician spotlight. We're here in the Tune Factory, the place formerly known as the Pat Cave, and uh, the local production studios. We would like to thank our sponsors for tonight's show, Music Villa, legendary musical instruments here in Bozeman, Montana, and Columbo's Pizza and Pasta, serving up pizza, pasta, and sandwiches, all prepared from fresh, locally sourced ingredients. They're at the corner of 10th and College. Thank them for their support. We're in the spotlight tonight with Matt Miller. This next one's called uh, Tequila in Texas. Wash away this hurt and 
Drank away her memory There's not enough to keep her in Texas Whiskey in Tennessee To bring that girl back home When she hit the road The tears in her eyes Well I just watched her go Man I did realize That she would find someone Who made her feel alive Now I'm barely hanging on to what's left of my pride There's not enough to keep her in Texas Whiskey in Tennessee To wash away this hurt And drink away her memory There's not enough to keep her in Texas Whiskey in Tennessee Bring that girl back on me. There's not enough to keep her in Texas. In Tennessee to wash away this hurt, drink away her memory. There's not enough to keep her in Texas. Whiskey in Tennessee to bring that girl back home. Me. I'll bring. All right, this next tune here I wrote uh, about a little town in uh, outside of San Antonio, Texas, called the Lotus, Texas. <laughs> Home to one of my favorite uh, favorite honky tonks or uh, dance halls of all time, uh, John T. Floor's Country Store, and uh, I wrote this tune uh, while at a Robert O'Keefe show there, uh, eating tamales on the uh, on the back porch. This one's uh, called Little Old Town. Hang that like tamales and 
Texas on a Saturday night Well, the sheriff at the door didn't seem too proud of me We walked out to smoke, he said, boy, don't touch those keys Say good luck with her, just don't push your luck with me. Well, I flash a nervous smile and we walked hand in hand to the street. Robert Earl was singing, thank you to Wait to the rhythm in your hand fell into mine. We moved to the bar for another tequila line. Ain't nothing like tamales in Texas on Saturday night. Well, I'm leaving. Tomorrow, really wish I could stay. And hang around your little town at least a few more days. But my home's in the mountains of Montana, so very far away. But I'll look you up the next time. South this way. Robert Earl was singing dreadful, selfish cry. Sway to the rhythm in your hand, fell into mine. We moved to the bar for another to keep. Saturday night It's a little old town Flashing neon light Robert Earl Keen show a plate of tamales and a song. That's a pretty good night, I'd have to say. It was pretty good. <laughs> the night or the song didn't all come together that night. But there's a couple old signs on the wall there. There's a, it was like fifteen dollar fine or something for fighting. <laughs> and then one just there's this placard that said the best tamales in Texas. And I just like the way that rolled off the, off the tongue there. So I thought, huh, we might as well yeah, give that, that a go. <laughs> it worked pretty good. Well, Matt, thanks for coming in tonight. Yeah, and, thanks uh, for having me. Yeah, I was trying to think. I think I saw you last at uh, Slam, probably in 2019. And probably. That's been, uh, that's been a while. Yeah, <laughs> it's been a while. I think we've all we've all been through a lot since then. Yeah, that's yeah. It's uh, a couple things happened between a, then and now. Just a few, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. So uh, you're kind of digging out of that, and things starting to straighten out and fly right now. Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, I think that after we got through uh, the pandemic, it was uh, seemed a little bit like everybody was craving live music, as, you know, most <laughs> major things happen in life. I think a great way to pull yourself out of something that's so serious and devastating is usually a lot of people turn to the arts. So I think that we've yeah. had a pretty, pretty exceptional experience. Uh, turnout rate at a lot of these shows a lot of people are really excited to just go out and hear hear some live music i think it's a, a healing thing for sure yeah yeah you know it's it is uh it's what they say the poets say it is good for the soul it seems so. yeah no doubt yeah and i uh you know i'd noticed that when when places were opening up and people were starting to play out and stuff again yeah turnouts were really good and and uh I guess it remains to be seen, but I hope that keeps up. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. I think before the pandemic, people might have gotten a little 
I don't know, jaded or something. It seemed like attendance was kind of dropping off at live events pretty bad. And uh, so I hope this kind of wakes people up and they go, hey, this is worth, you know, this is worth doing. It's fun. And um, maybe I need to do it once in a while just to keep it around so that I can. <laughs> so it's there when I want to do it. So Absolutely. And so much of... <clears throat> uh, so much new material and so many new albums and such different uh, avenues of recording and a lot of music that I've found that I have really liked albums that came out and uh, artists are really diving deep. You know, it's rare yeah. for, I mean, someone even on my level all the way up to the top for us to have many nights off or right. days off of our day jobs or even off of tour or off just going and going it's it's really nice self-reflection time and i think a lot of good art can come out of having a lot of space yeah I, that certainly seems to be the case i think there were maybe a few people that um <laughs> the existential dread kind of got in the way of that oh, but i yeah. think for a lot of people it's <laughs> like yeah i've got this time now and sure i'm you know i'm freaked out but but that can fuel things too yeah <laughs> and, yeah uh, it gets so you I, thinking about some stuff maybe yeah. you hadn't before so I think, yeah, I think a lot of songs got written in the last couple of years, a lot of great music, and uh, so. Absolutely. Um, so now we get to enjoy the fruit of all of that, which is awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I'm enjoying it, no doubt. Did uh, did you get a lot of writing done? I did get quite a bit of writing done. I Like you said, I was kind of trying to stay out of the uh, just honing in on the, the dreary and the <laughs> existential dread. Uh, I think that's how everybody's song started yeah. at the beginning of that because it seemed uh, as though we were just kept going lower. And uh, But I think that finding hope in the midst of, you know, some of life's biggest challenges or even just diving into them head on. I mean, playing country Americana music, most of what we play, even if we put a happy chord to it, it's usually pretty pretty dark undertones maybe. yeah yeah some brutal <laughs> some brutal honesty and yeah uh, deep self-reflection yeah, yeah sometimes sometimes you can find i know i find happiness out of those those slower sad tunes that are just honest but yeah yeah i yeah. did get did get some writing done and um got to call call good friends and you know as everybody got familiar with the zoom and facetime <laughs> pretty well i felt like so yeah yeah it's a blessing and a curse for sure absolutely <laughs> depending on your wi-fi signal yeah exactly <laughs> yeah for yeah for some people it was probably a double curse yeah yeah absolutely uh, so uh have you um do you have any recorded do you have any albums or recorded music out nothing right now um i'm actually playing a live show uh, we're going to try and record here uh, on Saturday in Bozeman. Cool. Um, I'm going to be doing an opening set. We're going to record that and hopefully just kind of toss that up on, on Spotify and all the listening platforms just to get something out there. And yeah. then um, been working with a buddy of mine um, out of Texas. We're, we're kind of trying to hammer down a date and studio and stuff like that right now. So. Oh, cool. We've got got the songs on paper and have for a long time, but just kind of decided to take the the live approach for a long time and yeah. play to people and really just shop these songs around and just kind of see what landed, what didn't, and then uh, kind of go from there. Yeah, I think you know it's certainly different different musicians. I think approach it differently, but I think a lot of them and it seems to great effect. You know, play, getting out there and playing them out and seeing what pieces of them worked, what didn't, yeah. maybe what entire songs, and, and taking an opportunity to uh, incorporate some of the feedback. I think that sometimes that's pretty good for songs. So Yeah, and depending on what you like to do, like we were talking about earlier, I I love playing to a live crowd. So I get into a studio and I, I clam up a little bit, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, it takes a few to, to get it going. But when I walk into a, walk into a crowded bar, I feel kind of... Uh, right at home ready to go so <laughs> it'll be fun to to turn that tide and it's a whole new whole new adventure and a whole new skill set to be able to be good in the studio and with you know headphones on and hearing your own voice inside yeah. your head is 
it's different than <laughs> reverberating off the the drunken walls of a, a crowded honky tonk. So. so yeah, so when you can't hardly hear yourself, even if, even if you're screaming, right? Absolutely. Yeah, there's no space for internal thoughts when it's that loud. That's right. That's yeah. right. You just gotta push to see if anybody can hear you. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Well, I wonder if maybe you want to play a couple more, and then we'll we'll chat a little more. Yeah. Absolutely. With the death grip capo, we were this is we were a, talking about the capo earlier. <laughs> this is a feature of engineering here. I usually go with the old trusty shub, and I tried to do something else. And gosh, I won't make that mistake again. <laughs> You'll see when the song's over, the the death grip we'll have to use to get this thing off of here. But um, yeah, I guess in uh, in accordance with the uh, kind of darker songs. Uh, this is a this is one that came out of the pandemic for me, and I was trying to write a love song, and I was kind of trying to bring some redemption in at the end, and I just figured, you know what, it's a it's a it's a murder song. It's it's got to be. So uh, this one's called Lucy. <laughs> Yeah. 
All right, this next one is... I actually wrote this song pretty pretty early in the songwriting journey once I got to, got started uh, writing my own tunes. Um, and this one was, uh, yeah, one of those more, more introspective uh, tunes about just kind of stuff that was going on at the time. This one's called Redemption in the Road. That song, Lucy, I, yeah, I can easily inv- see that as a as a COVID song. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like, like playing that right next to that first song, Honky Talk Ho- Hollywood, would be kind of a an emotional roller coaster. It would be a, a big one, you know. Yeah. That's definitely something I'm I'm working on. I feel like for me, being a fan of slower, sadder, more lyric driven tunes, I've always uh, been very guilty of of uh playing way too many covers at shows because 
I tend to see people either, you know, reaching for a pill bottle in their <laughs> in their purse or uh, maybe just like going somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to write some happier songs little, here, maybe some dancers or uh, a little bit upbeat. Yeah, yeah, trying to. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was uh, listening to that first song, and you were talking about swapping the palm trees out for pines, and it's just like uh, all of a sudden I got this really sharp mental picture of just sitting outside at Pine Creek, and it was just like. I love it when songs do that, like make yeah. you, like put you in a place. Well, I'm glad and, uh, it took you there because I wasn't too far from that place when I finished that song and I did the second verse. Uh, I was actually at the old saloon, and so uh, <laughs> it was the the beginning of that song was from the Western Cafe in Bozeman, and there was it's something about wood old wooden signs inside of places. I don't know tamales <laughs> in Texas. That first line was uh, off of a wooden sign. Uh, from the Western that said homemade pies. And I just was looking around, watching kind of the difference between the newer Bozeman meeting the older Bozeman. And so I thought of homemade pies, small town lies, hot grease in a cast iron pan, (laughs) old men's eyes staring holes through guys they wish they could have been. And so it's like it was that whole thing. And then I went to the old saloon uh, the next week, and I had only had that first half in the chorus done. And uh, we were about to go on and play a show, and I saw this lady smoking a cigarette and holding a baby, and I was like, that's crazy. You just don't see that anymore. Yeah. And it was cool to see, like, okay, so here's, like, here's this new urban development just 30 minutes down the road, and here's some people who are still living the same way. And there's nothing nothing wrong with any of it. It's just, you know, we're all learning how to how to <laughs> deal and where we all fit in in that. And so. Right. Honky. How to make those pieces kind of fit together. And, yeah, and yeah. those those people still getting along, you know, and, yeah, and yeah so that's kind of where, where that tune came from. <laughs> well, if you're just tuning in, this is the Local Musician Spotlight here on KGVM Bozeman, and uh, we do want to thank Music Villa and Columbo's Pizza and Pasta, and we want to thank Loken Productions and Pat Loken for everything, doing providing the space, the Tune Factory here, and a lot of great music goes down here between... Pat's shows in the Gallatin Underground, and uh, he's always doing all the video, all the audio, and uh, promoting shows. Uh, there will be, I think, not James Taylor is on tomorrow night at the filling station, and Saturday night there will be Galvanist and the Love Darts, Gim and Reed and Josh Langdon, I think. And Sunday night is uh, a band called Dusty... Uh, uh, throwing Out Bones. Throwing Out Bones. <laughs> Yeah, so a lot of great music coming up, and uh, but uh, we're here with Matt Miller and having a good time here in the Tune Factory. Absolutely. I appreciate you guys having me. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, go ahead if you want to maybe play a couple more. And we'll... Yeah. Um, probably throw in, uh, throw in a cover here, maybe. Um, when I got started writing songs, I remember kind of falling in... Uh, in my teenage years in high school, uh, falling into a lot of the uh, Americana stuff that was going on in the early 2000s. And one of those guys and one of those bands for me was uh, Ryan Adams and Whiskey Town. And uh, I always really liked this one. Um, this one's called uh, Oh My Sweet Carolina. I went down east I stopped in San Antonio I passed up the station for the bus Trying to find me something Wasn't sure just what Man, I handed up with pockets full of dust I went on to Cleveland I ended up insane Bought a borrowed suit And I learned to dance I was spending money Like the way it likes to rain Then I ended up With pockets full of cane
Capo. <laughs> We're going to get through this together. You're, you're thinking that it's not going to replace the shove as the regular in your gig it's, bag? There's no way. <laughs> it never has. It never will. But I am a professional at leaving capos. Anywhere I play, uh, I leave usually leave a souvenir for somebody. Um, but we will be going to one of the sponsors, to Music Villa, tomorrow and it's funny because i buy capos t- two at a time and it always cracks them up because it's usually <laughs> once a month that's yeah. i'm this is getting serious it's becoming a problem <laughs> someday when you're famous there will be people out there that'll have those like hey i got this from him when he was yeah you yeah. know i hope that one day i can be famous enough if shub's listening to just keep sending those things because they could Lord just knows throw, I need throw a package in the mail about once a week and you'd be set. Once a week and you will never see me with this guy again. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Well, this next one is um, this is another uh, Texas song. So I moved up here uh, 13 years ago from Oklahoma, um, but uh, lived down in Texas for a little spell as well. And 
Yeah, there's something about that place that makes you want to write a song. This one's called Hill Country Heartache. made it through all of those songs without screwing up the words but somewhere in the mix of <laughs> verse two three in that chorus um just sorry for <laughs> for that don't don't listen too intently on that part there you go <laughs> if people are watching on the uh looking productions youtube stream you'll uh you can obviously see what a beautiful guitar matt has we were ge- i was geeking out over it earlier if you're watching on the YouTube stream and you don't think that's a beautiful guitar, we need to get a beer sometime and I'll convince you of the error <laughs> of your ways. But if you're listening on KGVM or the KGVM stream, it's this Gibson Hummingbird and it's got this beautiful light sunburst top, almost blonde in the middle. And it's kind of a pretty distinctive finish. And uh, I was I was really, really liking that looks of that guitar. And it sounds great too, which is a bonus. It, it or maybe does. maybe the looks are a bonus over the sounds great, I guess. But you know, it I think it it probably hits on all sides, and maybe that's why I wanted it so bad. It's a nice distraction when you're playing. You know, people will yeah. look and listen to this, and then let me just do whatever <laughs> Stand I'm doing back, back behind here. It and do yeah, things, yeah. That's yeah. True. Matt's got a got a story about that guitar. Yeah. Well. First off, this was my dream guitar when I was 12 years old and first started playing guitar. Back when we were first getting home computers and stuff with uh, good old Windows 98 and all that, (laughs) the screensaver on my account was this guitar for years, hoping that maybe one day it would find its way to me. And 18 years later, here it is. But uh, 
yeah, more recently, uh, this guitar almost ended up in the Yellowstone River, unfortunately. Uh, I play music uh, most every Sunday uh, at a good buddy named Cowboy Mike's house uh, with f- other fellow musicians uh, down in Emigrant. And, uh, yeah, we had had a really good time that night, and I decided to leave this on the ground in its case, of course, but on the ground nonetheless. Uh, and I got a call from him that next day because I left it over uh, in the barn there. And uh, he was joking around with me and he said, hey, man, we were able to find it, but uh, it was floating. <laughs> <laughs> and he was totally messing with me, but my heart stopped because here's this dream guitar that I now can't re afford to buy. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I thought we had lost her. The, the strap got a little mangled. Um, in the river, I think it's savable, but the guitar is here. It, it's yeah. it's made its way. <laughs> Something's watching out for the guitar. Oh anyway. my goodness! That's, yeah, uh, it's it's just too beautiful of a of a guitar to die. I guess. So. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. But. Cool. Um, yeah, I guess maybe before you maybe before you do your next set of songs, um, sounds like you got you're pretty busy with the schedule of shows coming up. Yeah. Yeah, we're staying busy. Um, let's see, tomorrow uh, tomorrow night um, from 9.30 to 12.30, I'll be at the Poor House downtown. Um, that'll be a solo show. Uh, and then on Friday, I will be at Stacy's um, out in Gallatin Gateway. And I believe that one is 8.30 to 11.30 out there. Uh, we'll have a trio. Um, we'll have... Uh, my drummer and guitar player who are part of uh, a a band that plays with a few different bands called the Western Family Band Um, be out there on Friday um, and then on Saturday uh, I will start the day off at uh, the block party for um, uh, Single Barrel uh, over, over there in Ferguson Farms and then I will go directly from there to Live from the Divide and uh, open up for Rob Baird over there, and that show will start around 8. Cool. So, yeah. It's a pretty good weekend of music, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah. Fit the day job in there, and there's <laughs> no time left. It's that's, the way, way it should be. <laughs> that's right, yeah. Not much time for, uh, for other trouble, no doubt. So, yeah, if people are liking this, and obviously you are, um, <laughs> It'll only be better live. That's what I. That's my experience with music. So I, yeah, I trust yours will be too. So heck yeah, awesome. Well, yeah, if you want to play some more, good deal. Yeah, we probably got a couple more for you here. Cool. <clears throat> So some of these songs I write with lyrics in mind and other ones uh, is more for that crowd like we were talking about. And I'd say that this one was more of one of those songs that I could just envision a pedal steel and a a good telecaster going on. (laughs) This one's called uh, Is It Me or Am I Losing You? Memory lingers 
about as country a song title as you could ask for yeah that one that one i just wrote the title and we just went straight along with it it <laughs> there wasn't much review on that one that, that's just a, a simple country song there <laughs> yeah no doubt um uh this one's actually uh i wish i wrote this one uh this one's by an artist that i really admire uh ryan bingham um, here it is. Sugar on the lips, underneath that moon high. 
right. We've got about three and a half minutes left. I don't know if that's enough time for the one more, or should we just chat a little bit more? Uh, either way, yeah. Okay. If you want to, I guess if you want to play. Yeah. So this is a risky one because I wrote this song two days ago, but I figure last song you might as well sure. just go for it. Uh, but yeah, this is the first time I've ever uh, played this song outside of uh, my house. But uh, this one is uh, a new one called Hard Luck and Hemingway. I've been living on Hard Luck and Hemingway Drills me to go and force me to stay Whiskey drowns and words remain Just living on hard luck anyway Laughing down the road and over that hill I got a motel Bible in border town pay Got a big old boy that your heart won't fail Laughing down the road and over that hill Well, I'm flying down the tracks like a runaway train Rolling through these towns like a hurricane I got hard luck and Hemingway on my mind. I'm sitting out late and sleeping alone. Got a mess of jail. Sounds like it's already aged plenty. <laughs> we're, we're trying. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I want to thank you. You've been listening to Matt Miller here on the Local Musician Spotlight. I want to thank you for coming in and playing for us tonight. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you both for having me. Yeah, and so keep an eye out. Go down to your favorite watering hole and hear Matt and uh, support local live music. It's, uh, it's good for you. It's good for everybody. Absolutely. All yeah. right. Appreciate it, guys. You bet. <laughs> 